Hello everybody, Jose Rodriguez once again. This week I have been asked several times by several people about the ink level sensor system that I have installed on my Pro 1000. This was designed by Precision Colors Michael Lee and he makes that available for us. And what does it do for us? Well basically it's like a backup system or a safety net. If we feel that we cannot really trust the chips to display to us the actual ink levels even though the way that the Pro 1000 internally measures and calculates how much ink has actually passed through in other words how much ink has actually been extracted from each one of the cartridges it's still nice to have a backup now the questions have revolved around the workflow or the series of steps that we need to be very careful with and adhere to. Now, ideally, what happens is when you begin to refill these cartridges, you will eventually run out of ink out of one of them and you remove the front white cap of the cartridge right here and replace the chip with a single use chip. That chip will then provide the printer with the color code and it will be seen as authentic and of course you better have already refilled your cartridge this empty dried one weighs 32 grams a full one will weigh 112 I have drilled on the upper left corner a 5 30 seconds of an inch hole very carefully when you do that you might generate a little bit of ridge of plastic you remove that with a razor blade nice and flat do not worry about chips drills have a reverse helix they are designed to pull chips out not push chips in okay be aware of that a lot of people are so worried about that that's not the way drill bits work so Insert the plug, make sure that it is a nice tight fit. This is where you can go wrong, okay? This is where you can go wrong. But once you drill that hole, you no longer have to vacuum fill or pressure fill your cartridges, which is another method of refilling. This is a lot easier because you can simply use a bottle with a syringe needle, hold it on your scale, add ink until it reaches 112 grams. That is a full factory fill of ink. Now, let's assume that we will not be using the ink level sensor system. Not yet. But you are hell-bent on disabling the chip because you are tired of paying $12, $13 for a single-use chip every time. Okay, So by disabling that chip, you will have an indication of color here, but it will not show you a level. You have to then, on your own, weigh your cartridges, take them out every month, weigh each one and see how much ink has been used by the difference in weight from 112 initially down to 32, which you never want to go down to that level, okay? The only way to be sure that you're not going to end up with air in your system is to use a chip but we will disable the chips. So how are we going to keep track of that? Well, again, like I said, every month weigh your cartridges. If they get down to like 50 grams, make sure you top them off. As you check the weights, it might be at the danger point, depending on what you believe the danger point is, top them off. That way they are always filled with ink. Okay, that is critical. Now, ink level sensor system. What it does, it has been calibrated. There is a calibration screw underneath that cap right here. All of these little caps. There's a calibration screw that Mike will, when he sells you a set of these sensors, has been calibrated on a control cartridge that has 20 milliliters of ink in it. Okay? It will be triggered 
one ml up or down okay somewhere around that neighborhood but what will happen is that as you take a close look here I have 12 lights on and other than my power light here and my power light here none of the cartridge lights are on they are all off that means that all my cartridges are above the 20 ml limit okay once one of them begins to drop to the point where it's 23 ml you will see a flickering of the lights say for instance the so we have six lights here say for instance blue starts to get a little bit low you will see a flicker between this light and this light here this one corresponds to this this one corresponds to this this one corresponds to this and so forth the same thing here the first six correspond to these six lights now you will see as you're printing a flickering of, of the two lights and at some point this light will remain constant and this light will go off will turn off and that is a way to tell you that the system is working when the sensors are working properly this will either be on and this will be off or this will be off and this will be on now there could be a malfunctioning sensor that may be on all the time okay and maybe the cable may not be uh, transmitting the information correctly very very rare I have not heard except for one person that had that problem there's been dozens and dozens and dozens of these sensor sets sold already and put into practice now let's talk about why we want to use this this is what's going to save our butts and prevent us from ever reaching a dangerously low ink level how do you disable these chips well I like to begin with OEM chips and what I will do keep track of my levels when you have OEM chips that have not been messed with you will have indication of ink levels so before and I stress before you reach low and low is displayed as a yellow I think exclamation mark okay you will take that cartridge out you will drill it while it still has ink in it top it off at that point put a plug in it put it back in that cartridge now has been topped off so at some point the printer knows how much ink has left that cartridge what it doesn't know however is that you topped it off so once the correct amount of ink has left that cartridge and that's counted internally it will trigger the low ink warning I have one PC is yellow yellow exclamation mark all the other ones are disabled it says new notice you might be running out of ink yeah I know <laughs> but it doesn't know that my cartridges are all full so you get the low ink warning don't worry about it you just keep adding ink to your cartridge at some point however the printer is going to say wait a minute wait a minute fellow or ma'am you have been printing till the cows came home when I declared that that cartridge was low and by now it should have been empty many moons ago what's going on it's going to trigger a 1753 error at that point you press the pause button here five seconds it will say processing and then once it is done that channels chip on the cartridge that is will be declared disabled so now what we're going to do even though it does not give you any instructions here I would suggest if this is your first time and you encounter this and this is what you really want to do you go to your computer look up that support code and it will very likely take you to the same page that I extracted these descriptions from so we'll continue on with the process here is my power button 
here is my stop button. I'm going to press that button, hold it for five seconds, and then let go. You should see the word processing appearing here on the screen. Zero, one, two, three, four, five. Processing. And I was doing a nozzle check, so it takes me back to my original. All of it was perfect, as you can see right here. And we'll go ahead and hit OK, because they're all like on example A. Nothing is missing, as in example B. So we'll go ahead and hit A. Nozzle is not clogged and does not require cleaning. OK. And we'll back up. And then you will see that this PM that used to be red x now has a full bar on it. This one is a remaining one, PC. So photocyan is the next one to go. All right, you saw how simple that was. If you do it correctly, it really does work. And of course, now we rely on our sensor system to keep us informed of how much ink is left in our cartridges. It may go empty, physically empty on the chip, not on the cartridge, on the chip. And again, like I said, you keep topping it off, you get a red X rather than a yellow exclamation mark, continue to print. It will tell you, hey, you're running out of ink. Continue to print. You have a cartridge full of ink. At some point, again, just like the other one, you will get an error, 1753, press the pause button, five seconds processing, and you then have another chip disabled. What if you make this mistake? You forget to drill and top off your cartridge and you have let it go empty. Too bad. When it goes empty, you'll get a 1752 error. You cannot disable that chip. You would have to start again with a new chip, meaning a new cartridge. So that is it. Remember, before low or immediately after low, drill your cartridges and top them off whatever amount of ink you need to top it off to 112 grams total weight that cartridge now has been sort of insured or, or immunized against it actually running empty so once it reaches the 1753 error whether it stays low and then immediately goes into the error mode or whether it reaches empty and after a while, after some printing, immediately goes into the error mode. At least at that point, you'll get the 1753. That is the key number. No other number will allow you to disable the chip. 1753. Hold the button down. Five seconds. Processing. That chip is now disabled. You saw me do this live on a video. Go back and look at that. Okay? I hope this gets the point across. It's a very simple process. Now, again, this system is not connected to the printer at all. At all. It can be used on regular OEM cartridges that are not disabled. Again, it's just a secondary backup system to tell you, hey, dude, you're at 20 ml. Okay? It might be time to either, you know, start planning for a replacement or... If you're refilling, top everything off at this point. Okay, It's not connected. It does not communicate in any way, shape, or form with the printer or the printer's operation. It's just a visual aid for you to be able to tell when a cartridge needs to be topped off. Okay, So what I do whenever I need to do this, because as you see, I have a network of cables. And they're all running to the side of the printer, and I have a nice little printer management, bunch of little clips there. I will unclip one of those. In other words, say this one needs to be replaced. I will unclip that one. I will remove the fuller, the sensor fuller right here. The screen will go into cartridge change mode. You might ask, what the hell are you talking about? Well, remember, the door is supposed to be closed. But we can't close it. The cables do not allow us to close it. The sensors will not allow us to close it. 
So we need to have it open and we need to fool that optical sensor into thinking that the actual door is closed. That's why it's in print mode right now. If I remove the sensor, you will see this change. Processing, please wait momentarily. It goes into the cartridge changing mode. If I insert the sensor fuller again, it goes back into processing, wait, and I go back to regular printing mode. Now, do not, I repeat, do not remove cartridges without doing that, without removing that sensor folder. That would mean that you remove the cartridge without opening the door. How in the world is that possible? You want to confuse the hell out of your printer? Go ahead and do that. But I would recommend against it, okay? So do not do that. Always remember to pull this. You cannot remove a cartridge to weigh it or do whatever you want to do to it without opening the door. And we are virtually, virtually opening that door by removing that sensor fuller. You better have that cartridge change mode indicated on your screen, okay? Once you got that mode, then you can go ahead and remove a cartridge. So you will unhook it from the cable management on the side, remove the cartridge, remove the sensor, it pops right off, put it on a scale and add ink until it weighs 112, put the plug back on it, attach the sensor back on it, insert it back into position, insert this fuller and you're good to go. That's all it takes. From now on, I don't have to ever worry. I got one more. One more to go before I have to disable that one. Let's go ahead. Maybe we'll get lucky. Who knows? Let's try this. Let's run a nozzle check pattern. It may go into a clean cycle. I haven't printed on it for a while. That noise that you hear, you hear that? It's going to get faster. You hear that? Like tapping. That is the agitation cycle taking place. Each of the 12 compartments has a little bit of a piston in it and it's doing this. In and out, in and out, in and out, agitating that ink. Once it is done with that, it's doing, it's not wasting ink right now. Okay, be aware of that. It's not wasting any ink at all. Once it gets done doing that, it's going to go ahead and do a cleaning cycle. It says printing, but of course it's not going to print yet. There you go. So that is the pump. That is the vacuum pump making sure that the parking station does not have any ink on it at this point. It's sucking that dry. The print head has already detached and moved to the left a little bit. It's draining the perch unit. The actual vacuum application to the print head is silent. We'll wait for it. It may take a while. Okay, now it is applying vacuum. It's silent. It is applying vacuum to the printhead. That perch pad will become saturated with ink again, and you will hear the pump again turning, and that perch pad is being drained. And it depends how much it feels that it needs to perform. It may actually do a nozzle check as well. Well, it's going to check nozzles one by one. I think it's doing that. Let's see. The nozzle check process, if you take a peek, you will see the print head over to the right and it'll move slightly to the left. To the right, you'll hear a click slightly to the left. Right, left, right, left, right. Every time it does that, it's checking one nozzle. It's doing it. Doo -doo. Doo -doo. Like I said, it's been about a week since I printed anything on here. So maybe we will trigger, maybe we will trigger the 1753 error. You'll be able to see that. I hope so. Anyway, it's been quite a while that that um, PC cartridge, the photocyan cartridge has been on the low condition. So if it finds a nozzle that has been, say, deteriorated to the point where the printer feels that it's no longer reliable 
it will replace it with a redundant nozzle. Redundant nozzles in these families of printers are unused nozzles. They have spares, if you will, and they, they will be brought into play to replace those um, damaged or unrepairable nozzles. In other words, they cannot be unclogged for whatever the reason. They will be replaced with a redundant nozzle. Once all of the redundant nozzles are basically used up in a particular channel, that's it. The whole printhead needs to be replaced at that point. And that is just something, I guess, endemic to Canon printers. People who have some of the older IPF, say a 6400 series, uh, that has two printheads, one for every six channels. So you have two printheads that you got to replace maybe every two to two and a half years. I mean routinely. And that's about a thousand dollars right there at least. That's why I stress people don't jump at getting something like this if you're just a casual printer. You're not a committed printer who's going to print uh, large amounts of prints. This is what this is meant for. Okay, it's beginning. I hear the vacuum. The vacuum advance has been here because the paper is being um, advanced. It did not throw an error, so I guess we're, we'll have to wait longer for the um, that one last channel to be declared. 1753. As you saw, that was not a huge cleaning cycle. Maybe one or two little segments of it. Most of it was agitation in the nozzle checking. And nozzle checking does not use ink. Here we go. Perfect. Perfect nozzle check. So, and of course, let it finish printing. Nothing here was has changed, although the lights are still on. We'll see what happens. See if, if we still have that PC channel. Okay, what you heard now, what it does after a job is finished, it gives you like a 30 second grace period. If you have another job on cue, ready to be printed, there. You hear that? That is draining the perch pad. Okay? It also pulled out a tiny amount of ink out of the printer to make sure that it is ready for the next job. Say I have to print something five minutes from now. That printhead will be primed and it will not generate another cleaning cycle. I could print till tonight and nothing coming close to a clean cycle will be generated. So, Are the patterns all look like A or B? B has broken lines, A does not. So we will choose A. Nozzle is not clogged and does not require cleaning. And we still have a yellow uh, indicator on the PC. Oh well. I thought I would be able to uh, show you guys how to do the uh, resetting procedure. So anyway, so after the print, because another job was not sensed to be in line, it had to reprime the printhead a little bit and get it ready for the next job. Assuming, of course, I don't wait, I don't wait another week. Okay. It's expecting me to send the next job very soon. And that way that printhead will not have to be cleaned again. I could have a lineup, say, 13 by 19 times 10. Yeah, it will print those one after the other, but it may stop maybe after the 5th or 6th, 13 by 19, and do a little cleaning cycle. The reason being is that these printheads are thermal, and they do generate because they're exploding the ink droplet by droplet, micro droplet by droplet, and that may generate some sort of residue created by the heat. And it cannot let that pile up. It cannot let that build up. So when it senses, hey, it's getting, I'm, I'm getting a little cruddy here, let me flush myself out. Unfortunately, it uses ink for that. So there's no other option for that at this point. All right. Hope you guys enjoyed this. Thank you so much. Don't forget to subscribe, share, and like, and follow these instructions. I've already done it. 
I just needed to repeat myself one more time. All right, this system will work. It is reliable and without any chip reporting, I can keep track of my ink levels. Happy printing, everyone. Bye-bye.